some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today's video takes us to Taylor, Michigan with Judge Slavin as he ends up taking on Eric Martin once again. And, uh, well, the judge uh, tries to educate this poor moron on what the law actually is. But does it stick? Probably not. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Mr. Martin. Oh. Hello? All right, Mr. Martin, I just want to clarify something because uh, I am inclined to grant your motion for the appointment of counsel. But the problem is in, inside your motion for counsel, it also states that you are not consenting to the jurisdiction of the court. So if you're not consenting to the jurisdiction of the court, how is this court supposed to grant your motion for appointment of counsel? I already have jurisdiction over you. That's that's already been established clearly. So do you do you want counsel? Because if you do, I'm going to appoint counsel. Yeah, I still want the counsel, but like I said, without the fraudulent presumptions and all that. But uh, and I, uh, sure, I, you, sure, hang on, hang on. If you could speak up and enunciate, because I don't know if it's maybe a connection error or if I'm just having trouble hearing what you're saying. So I just want to make sure that you're what you're saying is clearly stated on the record. Okay. Okay. Let me move my phone up away from my desk. I think that's the way that it's supposed to be best. But yeah, I still want time for it. Okay, so you um, so you do you are consenting to the to the jurisdiction of the court, and I can grant you counsel. Yes. Well, now that certainly is a valid question. Yeah, will Eric Martin, the lifelong sobtard, actually accept the uh, answer to jurisdiction? Find out today on As the Stomach Churns. Well, I'm not consenting to the jurisdiction of the court. Uh, I don't know what you're saying, sir. You said he's not consenting to the jurisdiction. You're not consenting to the jurisdiction of the court? Well, I've already found right. that. I, and first off, I, I find that I do have jurisdiction over you in this matter. You came to the location, like I stated before. You came into the location and availed yourself of all of the benefits and services that you can find here, uh, emergency services, road services, etc. You actually reside in the city of Taylor, so that alone is enough to have jurisdiction over your person in this uh, matter that occurred in, in the city of Taylor. So I do find that you have, that I have jurisdiction over you. So that matter is settled. Oh, I get it, Judge. So what you're basically saying is that since he resides in the city of Taylor, Michigan, that the laws of the city of Taylor and the laws of the uh, state of uh, Michigan and the laws of the United States do apply to him considering he lives in that general area. Wow, that's certainly a novel idea you got there, uh, Your Honor. But I doubt a uh, 20 or 30 year uh a uh, constitutional law scholar that you got here will be able to understand that. I mean, it's a foreign concept to him. Would you like to have counsel? That's not true, so I object to that. That's not true. You never, you never gave me a value fiction. What part's not true? Do you live in the city of Taylor? No, I'm not going to say that it's true as in, uh, not in the sense that you mean it, no. Or you're asking that's fraudulent. So you just... So you astral, do you astral project into the city of Taylor then um, from somewhere else? Or I don't understand. Living is, I don't know, breathing, live, reside, uh, Clippard Street, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Clippard well. Street, the, keep the, stuff. Is that, the thing is, if, if someone, you know, lays in a house, it's fraudulent presumed that the corporation, the fiction they're living in. All legal right, so, they right, so you're not a corp sir, you're not a corporation. I do find that you have jurisdiction. I have jurisdiction over you. I will note your objection uh, for the record. Uh, the claim that that's not true. I am going to. Uh, I am going to appoint uh, house counsel to you because you definitely need somebody who can understand and explain the law to you and be on your side uh, for the with that with, with regard to the case. So. I'm going to appoint House Counsel. 
again. Back and um, I'm going to put you into the breakout room, and House Counsel will be in to speak with you so you can speak privately. All right. Breakout room three, House Counsel three. Well, after talking with this Sovtard for well over two hours, uh, he ends up making a decision that, well, is pretty much the right one in his position. Two hours later. It's meant as a um, criticism. It's meant as a, it's just the law doesn't allow me to do certain things. And Mr. Martin disagrees with the law, and that's his right. Um but I, uh, Mr. Martin's come to the conclusion that he doesn't believe that I can effectively represent him. And after, like I say, over two hours of discussions with Mr. Martin, um, I, I, uh, I believe I'd have to agree with him. You are agreeing that the two of you disagree? That, or that you just can't represent? Because I, I do. No, I, I guess I would have to disagree with your own statement because I've seen. I think you're very confident in every case. No, I've I, seen. no I, I appreciate that, Judge. Yeah. But the um, based on uh, our uh, internal disagreements uh, in terms of how the case should proceed, what the law is, Strategy. how to apply the law, um, I, I just cannot, um, in his mind, effectively represent him. And, uh, and I can't represent him the way he wants me to. So you um, believe that he believes that you? I do, yes. Not that you actually wouldn't be. No, I'm, I'm in, in terms of this case, I'm more than well, able right. to go forward with it. But uh, under the circumstances, after, again, this is based on a long conversation with Mr. Martin. Um, uh, just uh, don't think that he's comfortable with me. Uh, yeah, if you've seen any of the other um, Eric Martin videos, then you know that this guy's uh, view on the law is rather warped and bizarre. I mean, he had to have been smoking a lot of lead paint in his uh, teepee out in the backyard for him to get this dumb. Mr. Martin, is that correct? That's correct. Is yes, we certainly don't uh, don't agree. Uh, we did talk for a long time and. Uh... But, uh, it's not simply just a disagreement. I don't think he's uh, think he's violating my right to affect the counsel based on one. He wouldn't even do the basic uh, photocopy some paperwork. I told him I wanted to get photocopied, you know, for the court and jury, uh, such as uh, you know laws, um, be used for my defenses, relevant to my defenses. Sure, but you understand. You do understand. You do understand that any instruction on the law to the jury is done by the judge. You understand that. Well, I don't, I don't understand. I don't agree with that. Or uh, no, no, sir. I, I I literally am charged with instructing the jurors on what the law is and what the elements of the case are. Yeah, I mean that's fine. That's I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to instruct the jurors that any instruction that they hear from the attorneys to disregard, and you're only going to take instruction about the law and what the law is from me because there's literally criminal jury instructions that are put out by the Michigan Supreme Court that are used in trials. And they've been vetted over the course of hundreds of years of tweaking and Supreme Court challenges and you name it and everything else. So that's literally what the jury is getting told is they're going to get told what the law is and that's going to be told to them by me. Do you understand that, right? But uh, well, but I also I don't agree to that degree, but to that degree, but I, as long as you don't knock out my right, I also have the right to present jury instructions on the law of the matter. So, you know, so long as I... You have the right, right, you have the right to present proposed jury instructions, yes. And I'll make the determination of what the jury instructions, what the instructions will be to the jury. So, but first, let's deal with this matter here. I wonder what uh, law school uh, Eric Martin went to to uh, think that he knows more about the law than a sitting judge 
who has been practicing law a good portion of his life. Go ahead and put in the comments what school of law you think he attended, because I know it had to be a school filled with uh, uh, clowns. You're saying that you no longer, you, you wish to have the court-appointed attorney, and now you do not wish to have this court-appointed attorney. Is that correct? But only in the sense of uh, I moved to uh, have another one appointed in his place since he's being ineffective based on he won't even photocopy. Not just a mere disagreement, um, but it's the uh, fact that he won't even photocopy. I asked him to, you know, let me go there for the office, photocopy. So I have enough copies to do because I don't have a job now. So I can't. Well, photocopy what, sir? Do you want him to photocopy what? I have several things written down in the law and things that need to be copied out of the Constitution. Just as several legal, uh, just, just several um, legal areas to be copied out of the law and just stuff that's relevant to my defense. So he should have give me no problem with photocopying. That problem, so that's really showing his uh, ineffective uh, violating my right of it. Uh, dude, uh, let me break it down for you. The attorney's job is to represent you in the court, not to copy and paste your bullshit arguments onto more pieces of paper. That would certainly be a waste of paper right there and a waste of everybody's time. So, yeah, but listen, that's not that, uh, photocopying is not an attorney's job. If you want something photocopied, go to the library and photocopy it yourself. The attorney's job is to talk and understand and be able to give advice about the law. He already knows the law. He doesn't need a photocopy in front of him. He already knows what the law is. But as I just said, they told him I do not have a job now to pay for the copies. So oh, so you what... want him to pay for it. So that's the rub. You want him to pay for photocopies that you want to make. Right. What? Well, you're more than that's... welcome to just have the button. Listen. Your attorney doesn't need the, the law in front of him. He already knows what the law is. So if you want a copy of the, what the law is, you're more than welcome to go to the library and check out a, a book that has the law in it. You can just bring the book with you. Oh, and no, take no. the book back to the library afterwards. It's free, free of charge. Again, I need paperwork photocopy that's relevant for my defense to present it to you and the jury. I have that right. First yeah. off, listen, you're not presenting you're not presenting any paperwork to the jury if it's about laws. If you're going to try to place things into evidence, you can lay a foundation and you can put in proposed exhibits for evidence, and then I'll make my rulings based on the rules of evidence uh, of whether or not those are, are supposed to come in and, and should come in, and whether they've had proper foundations laid, um, yeah, whether they are both reliable and accurate. That's that's the two things that we're literally looking for. So, and if they comport with with the uh, with the rules of evidence, then I'll then I'll admit them as your defendants exhibit whatever one, two, three, or four, whatever whatever the exhibits that you have are. So, this is a situation of driving us on a on a license that's been revoked or restricted. So what evidence is it that you, what a proposed evidence that you, do you have that you would need? Um, because we'll make copies here of that evidence as we, as it gets admitted. Cause I'll put a, a true, I'll put a true copy in the, the court file. I can give a copy to, for the, to the witness so they can see, uh, you know, so that kind of thing. But so as far as the motion to um, remove Mr. Fanto and the House Council crew that I have here, which includes Mr. Kaziki and Mr. Kutz, um, I'll, I'll, I'll once again grant that motion. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna request any fees or anything or costs uh, from you because I did appoint them. Then you said you didn't want them. Then you asked for them. Then I gave them to you, and then you went back and said you don't want them now. So. Um, with regard to a different attorney, um, do you have uh, do you have another attorney that you uh, were wanted to hire? Is that what you wanted to do, or you want me to appoint one to you? I don't have money to hire an attorney. Sure. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, appoint one to you. Um, let's see. 
I can pretty much uh, let me let me just take a look here at the possibility. You know what my suggestion is? Just let him go pro se and let him fall flat on his face. I mean, he's just going to go through the other attorney and do the exact same thing that he's been doing over and over again, saying that they're wrong and everything like that, and uh, refusing to work with them. So why even bother at this point? Just let him go pro se and let him fail. Because, you know, if he goes pro se, then you can have a tight leash on him in court, and that way he doesn't go... Uh, breaking any more laws while he's sitting there in court. You can rein him in like any other lawyer. All right, so I'm going to refer this to Ms. Patton from uh, the MIDC. And um, she will have, I will have an attorney here for you Tuesday for that for that jury trial. We'll be ready to go. Well, that's what I want. So, now another attorney being... We'll see you on Tuesday, sir. I'll have a court-appointed attorney here for you. Okay, but all right, see you Tuesday. Thank you. Well, first of all, dude, I mean, you said you lost your job. I mean, how did you lose your job? Uh, was it due to all the freaking court cases you have and been delaying and postponing and everything like that, trying to uh, get out of this with all your soft hard nonsense? Well, look at what it's cost you. It's cost you your job, and it's probably cost you your family. So you got to ask yourself, dude, was it worth it? I mean, come on now, dude. You got to look in the mirror and ask yourself that at some point. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. This could be some groundbreaking stuff right here. You don't want to go to jail. For what? You read this. Yeah. I don't have to listen to read anything. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not listening. Gosh. I'm not. No, I'm just sexual oriented. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. You suck. They think they know it all. What's the Third Amendment, punk? Tell me the Third Amendment and I'll leave. What's the Third Amendment? What's the Third Amendment and I'll fing leave right now? What's the Third Amendment? Tell me. Third Most definitely, because you don't understand why I'm here with a camera, doesn't mean I have to get out of here, doesn't mean I have to leave, doesn't mean I have to go, <clears throat> that sort of thing. Well, this is what, what we're going to do, um, we're going to have to enforce the, the CT and have you leave the property, um, per the postmaster, per the lead. Uh, per the um, the uh, the person, the landlord of this uh, facility. Uh, so with that said, um, oh, I've got too many entities. I know. You gave me a warning to get off the property. I got off the property. I need your name and date of birth. No, sir. You're either going to provide or you're going to. I'm going to remain silent, sir. Okay. Do you want my name and date of birth? Put your hands right now. He chose poorly. Morning, Deputy Regan St. John's County Sheriff's Office. Two reasons I'm stopping you. One, Pine Island speed limit's 25. You're going 36. Okay. That's still 10 miles per hour over the posted speed limit. It's 25. No, it's not 25? So, I was going at 35. So, that's 10 over. You just told me that you're going 10 over the posted speed limit. It, yes, you did. You said you're going 35, right? Yeah, That's a 25. 35. No, ma'am. It's it. The whole thing's 25. Okay. The other issue is your license plate cover is illegal. You can't have a tinted license plate cover over your license plate. Hello, ma'am. Hi. How are you? Okay. I'm doing good. Well, you're detained right now. You're not free to leave. Okay. Why? You. you know you are not to be on campus. You no. Put the phone down. She yes. asked me to leave and I left. No, ma'am. So you, you guys. You are now under arrest. You guys were arresting me for nothing. No. You know you've been arrested for this before. Dumbass. You dumbass. You're a dumbass. Such a dumbass. You're an ass.
Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's... Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that? You know why you're kicking me out? Because you don't want wa someone watching a movie in the courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I know some of y'all are disappointed. I'm disappointed. Um, I hope that you will continue to watch this channel because this channel has brought more good than negativity.